Hello, how are ya? Chef Kennedy here and welcome to my mini series, Creating Magic, where I take you step by step to create one epic meal. This month, we've been working on how to build a cheese plate. Each week, I've shown you a new element to create a beautiful cheese plate to share with friends or enjoy alone. The time has come for the grand finale. Over the past month, we've been on a majestical journey filled with pickles, cheese, and dancing. Oh my! We've gone into detail on how to create each individual element that no cheese board should go without. And today is the day where it all comes together with an artistic demonstration on how to plate a cheese plate. I'll start off by sharing one last recipe for the most delicious marinated olives that even olive haters will love. Then I'll walk you through step by step sharing simple techniques on making this masterpiece come together. If this is your first time tuning in, please refer back to my previous episodes to get the full scoop on the accoutrements in this video. If you've been with me since the jump, shout out to Axel. I'm so excited to share this finale with you and show you what else I have cooking up. Let's get into it. All right. We're starting off with our marinated olives. I like to use Castle Vetrano's with the pits. We're gonna drain the olives and you could save the juice for martinis or discard, but place it in a bowl. Now take an orange and you're gonna peel off the very outer layer of the rind. You wanna to try to avoid the white bitter pith. Do the same with a lemon. And you can zest these if you'd like. I just wanna add a little more texture to my olives. Now I'm going to julienne and then mince the rind. Do the same for the lemon. Add your citrus into the olives. Now I'm gonna take a sprig of rosemary and give it a rough chop. Add that to the bowl and we're gonna take three sprigs of fresh thyme and add in the leaves. Whenever I'm working with fresh herbs, I like to take the thickest part of the herb and pull down, picking off any additional leaves. Now you're going to quarter an orange and add the juice to the olives should be about two tablespoons of fresh orange juice. Set that aside. We're gonna add three crushed garlic cloves. The peel should pop off pretty easily. We're gonna place that into a small pot with three bay leaves, a half teaspoon of red pepper flakes, a quarter teaspoon of cracked black pepper, a half a cup of extra virgin olive oil. Cook that over medium heat for about five minutes until the garlic is fragrant. Add that to your olives. Give that a good mix, and as this sits, all of those flavors are going to marry together. I like adding this back into the same jar. Now 
You can refrigerate this, give it a good mix, and it should keep for about a week. Onto our cheese plate. I like to use either a slate or a nice wooden cutting board. I'm gonna start by placing my ramekins of jam, jelly, and preserves around the board. Then take wedges of my sharp cheddar. I also like slicing up some of the cheese so that people can enjoy easily. It's fun to play with different shapes too, so it's not too symmetrical. I'm adding some Miyoko smoked farmhouse here and my goat cheese done three ways. Also adding in our marinated olives and gluten-free seeded crackers. I like using the ramekin to get some height to create dimensions on your cheese board. It's nice to have peaks and valleys so that it's not a flat board. Feel free to move things around. Just like a painting, no cheese plate is alike. Now we're gonna take our pickled baby zucchini. I like adding these in different areas like the zucchini as well, filling up the spaces with the natural shape of the vegetable. Now taking some strawberries for a pop of color. And some dried figs for a little more texture. Adding our pickled red onions. and some dark cherries. I feel like fruit is the glitter of your cheese plate. Adding a couple basil leaves for some greenery here. I found these cheese knives at Pottery Barn. I've also seen a set at Target and Home Goods. So I'm just gonna place their respective knives near the appropriate cheese for easy access. Making final touches and voila. Okay, so here we have our beautiful month-long journey all expressed on this gorgeous cheese board. From our jams, jellies, preserves, to our pickles, from our house-made cheese to our crackers and focaccia, onto our marinated olives. It's been quite the journey, and the most exciting part is to, of course, eat the cheese plate. One of my favorite things about assembling a cheese plate besides the artistic value is just trying different combos. 
you know, you might say, oh, I'm gonna try the chive with a strawberry. And that might be weird, but it's about trying things and exploring, then sipping it with wine and seeing how that blossoms. It's such an exciting conversation piece to have. All right, let's give it a try. I'm gonna go with the peppered goat cheese here on some cracker. Let's do a little bit of the red pepper jelly too. And hmm, maybe a little pickled red onion. Cheers. It's so exciting making all these elements from scratch because it really does take you on a journey. I hope that you will try this. Even if you don't want to make your own vegan cheese, there are beautiful vegan cheeses on the market now. I recommend Miyoko's, Treeline, Violet Feta would be a good option here, Dr. Cow's. So definitely explore and see where this cheese board can take you. I'm so excited to share more recipes with you. Next week, I'm gonna be doing a Nutella lava cake. So definitely subscribe and stay tuned. From my cheese board to yours, Chef Candy out.